Hello and welcome to another episode of NXT UK Weekly brought to you right here on the Powered 4 Team YouTube channel and the podcast channel of course and I'm joined as always by my good buddy, my good pal, Mr Powered 4, John Scott. So uh, great to be speaking to you again John, uh, it's been a long time since we've done one of these or it seems to have been a long time, it's uh, seven days I know but uh, uh, yes uh, a lot has happened in between. Yeah, no, I was going to say mate it's consistent. But uh, maybe you're missing me too much. Uh, maybe that's what's happening here week to week <laughs> on his NXT UK yeah. <laughs> on his NXT UK things. But it's your anniversary, of course, this week. So no wonder you, you know you're a busy person. Two years. So maybe that's why. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, we're... a lot of things happening this end. A lot exactly. of things happening this end. But we're not here, we're not here to talk about wrestling with John. But thank you anyway. I, I do appreciate you all over. the help and all the support. And uh, yeah, no, I, I, yeah, I've, I've put myself over enough this week. It's it's time to talk a little bit of NXT UK so uh, yeah I mean uh, lots of things going on with Power 4 we're going to have an advert later on from Jess she's going to be uh, dropping lots of highlights of uh, what's co- what's to come and what's already happened on the uh, Powered 4 TV site and YouTube channel of course and there are one or two mentions of me as well which uh, uh, yeah I'm happy with that but uh, uh, NXT UK Weekly this is episode 9 I think John so into our second month already yeah. uh, we, we talk about the, the last 7 days dragging but uh, the, the past two months have really flown by so uh yeah t- two months in uh, how are you feeling about it so far two months in uh it seems a little little bit of an anniversary for us it seems like a long <laughs> seems like a lot longer at the moment but um yeah you know so far i think if i was to review it and summarize on you know what we've seen so far i think it's it's been decent. It's been different as well. Um, but, you know, I think that um, there is something unique about it. And uh, I do I do feel like the tone um, and the vibe has changed since the last NXT UK was sort of on our weekly television before COVID hit. So, yeah, yeah I think it's got its, uh, a little bit of a, a different identity again. Yeah, and and we spoke. I think it was last week about the you've got the the mini Thunderdome with the screens either side of the yep. entrance and the TV screens. Um, it's still not adding anything for me, to be honest with you. And I'm still missing that live attendance because one thing that NXT UK was always great at was, you know, the, the wrestling is always great and the fans always got into the atmosphere and the occasion was always there. It always felt like a, a big occasion, especially during some of them big main event matches. I can't help but think, you know, that Walter. Elia Dragunov match from a few weeks ago what that would have been like in front of fans and maybe the main event that we saw yep. this week what that would have been like in front of fans but uh, we haven't got that luxury at the minute certainly not with NXT UK um, but um, let, let's kick off with the, the show opener then because um, uh, NXT UK seemed to kick off quite regular with it with a tag match and they did so here as well and uh, it was the Hunt versus Amir Jordan and Kenny Williams John so uh, the Hunt was accompanied to the ring for the first time by Eddie Dennis. Uh, he's either there as their advisor, their manager, their, their circus manager, uh, maybe even their puppet master. Who knows? Uh, but uh, uh, one thing is for, is for sure, the Hunt... I think before we're kind of like a a mid card, maybe lower card tag team act, but with Eddie Dennis by their side, they're certainly top tier now. And uh, I think the winner of this match would be knocking on Gallus's door and uh, demanding a tag team title shot. But uh, just a few highlights from this match, then, John. I mean, Jordan and uh, Williams say with their usual exciting, fast paced, high flying self, wild boar and primate. They were vicious and they were they were brutal in their attack and some of their power moves. Now, brawling John we got a, a sweet hot tack from Amir Jordan and some uh, really, you know, pretty good offense from Kenny Williams, but it wasn't enough. Um, and the hunt got the win from a very impressive double uh, flying headbutt, both coming off from uh, from opposite corners uh, from Primate and Wild Boar and uh, with uh, Eddie Dennis by their side and calling the shots. Eddie Dennis calling the shots from ringside. Uh, we got a win by the Hunt and uh, Eddie Dennis appeared to be very, very happy with that performance. So uh, uh, how did you think this show opener went down and uh, Eddie Dennis seems to be kind of controlling all the moves as the puppet master or the, the circus master outside the ring to the Hunt getting this victory on this occasion? John. Yeah, it was uh, quite quite the visual when uh, the hunt came out, and then we saw uh, Eddie Dennis 
just uh, walking um, sort of in between them as they came out on their entrance. Mm. Quite interesting. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I can't sum really into that dynamic just yet. I'm uh, I'm still going to like hold off of what I actually think about it. I'm, I think Eddie Dennis is, you know, it just keeps adding layers to his character. You know, he's certainly very happy about what he saw, obviously. I'm not sure if he was overdoing it a little bit towards the end, but he was... <laughs> it was uh, he was salivating, you know. He was an happy guy at what he was seeing. That's obviously what he wanted. Um, so it's an interesting dynamic between you know himself. I don't know what he gains out of this. You know, potentially, uh, perhaps we are going to see a three on three down the road. I'm pretty sure of that um, when they get in there with Gallas. But nonetheless, um, I thought this match was decent. I, I wouldn't say it was the best opening we've had to an NXT UK because, as you rightly say, we have seen a lot of tag team matches kick off the show um this is one of those ones where i think they just needed to get the story across they just needed to get to that next part and obviously this part of it was you know i didn't really think too much for poor old amia jordan to be honest with you or williams i i kind of thought they were there to make the numbers up on this one um if, if i'm totally mm. honest i would have been really shocked if the first time we see Eddie Dennis um, out there with his new friends, that if they'd have picked up a, a, a defeat here, but um, yeah, decent, got the out in they needed, and um, yeah, not not too bad. So, the actual match itself, it wasn't you know fantastically you know done or anything like that, but I think, like I said before, it it just carries on to that next stage, and uh, that that's probably what exactly. it'll be about. Yeah, and it is, I think there's more layers to this story yeah. to come. And of course, we've still got that that tag match that will eventually happen between the Hunts and Flash Morgan Webster and Mark Andrews, yeah. which is really intriguing considering they've had a lengthy storyline with the attacks over the last seven or eight months. Um, and then, of course, the Hunt turning their back on Flash Morgan and Mark Andrews and Eddie Dennis being the, being the puppet master uh, on the outside. And um, it, it, it does add this extra layer, this extra edge and element to the Hunt. And uh, I think probably for the first time in their NXT UK history, we can take them seriously as a, as a potential tag team threat somewhere down mm. the line. And, uh, I mean, the, the tag team champions, Gallus, I mean, you mentioned it could be a possible, you know, three-on-three match somewhere somewhere down the road and that's possibly where we're heading um but uh yeah i i'm liking the hunt i thought they looked great loved their costumes loved their presentation uh loved the fact they've got to eddie dennis kind of calling all the shots and, and clicking his fingers and uh getting him to kind of do things on uh, on a you know on uh, 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 any instruction that he throws their way but uh, uh, then John we get a really brilliant video package highlighting uh, the long term relationship between Dave Mastiff the Bomber of course and Trent Seven um, heading into their, their match for the, the semi-final of the Heritage Cup later on which we'll talk all about and it was a, a perfect video uh, to uh, get us even more into or excited for the match a little bit later on but uh, I didn't realise until this video package John that they had such a, a deep history History and uh, such a past uh, with one being kind of the, the trainer uh, one being the master and one being the student yeah John. no absolutely I wasn't aware of that either but uh, it was a nice thing to add like I always like it when they add some realism into it I just think it you it know works, it's not yeah. for all the fans but for, for some fans like myself it really does help um, what I'm going to be invested into you know coming up and it gives that, that extra part to it you know it's, it's one of those things it's like a lot of people will say you know does it does it add anything more to the match? No, probably not. But it does have that extra buzz for the likes of me and you that maybe, you know, we're at a certain level. We've seen them on the UK Indies yeah. anyway. Uh, it, and so it kind of appeases us, I think, as, as fans a little bit more. And like any time they can put a little bit of realism in it, uh, I'm all for it. You know, just, just ramp that up. So it was a nice little touch uh, before the, the main event. Yeah, 100%. And speaking of realism, uh, we get the debut of Rampage Brown, John. Now, uh, I, I've got, honestly, I've been looking forward to seeing Rampage Brown in NXT UK all week. I've been looking forward to, to seeing him and talking about him on this episode with yourself. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, when I saw Jack Stars, though, um, I automatically I, I felt for Jack Stars. We've seen him get their hell beaten out of him by Walter and Saxton mm. Huxley. And you just know whenever Jack Stars yeah. out there, we're going to have this, this big brand new 
new star that's going to come out and uh, level him. Um, and that's exactly what happened here. Rampage Brown came out to some fairly generic music, oh, which was, uh, uh, was probably the, probably the low uh, the low point of this entire yeah. thing. But uh, Rampage Brown's performance could not be described as generic by any way, any stretch of the imagination. Uh, Rampage Brown in this one he caught Jack Stars in mid-air slamming him uh, out of his boots down to the canvas uh, followed this up with a massive fall away slam and then a devastating doctor bomb for this impressive debut win John and as we predicted last week or when we first realised that uh, Brown had signed with NXT UK um, it looked like he's, he's coming in as a top star and uh, Jack Stars I think needed to find and jump in the nearest ice bath uh, based on uh, how badly he was beaten up there but uh, what, what did you take away and what did you make of Rampage Brown's NXT UK debut well, here buddy? Well you the on the head with the music I think you knew I was going to go straight there so um, yeah that was not great. The entrance I mean the thing is there's no fans there so when you're going to make a debut now it's, it's going to be that much harder because you're not going to get that, that reaction, that pop of an, a new wrestler coming in so that's a, a downside to it hugely without fans um but then when you haven't got the music either and like it didn't look like we we're doing an awful lot with the lighting that like, there wasn't anything unique about it so that was a bit disappointing mm. they've had loads of time they knew he was coming in you'd have thought they'd have they'd have give him something a little bit better um the match you know i'll I, you knew exactly what it was going to be, as you said. I was a little bit underwhelmed, I have to say, a little bit. Um, you know, I know what it was meant to do. Showcase Rampage in, in all the best areas. I still am not totally sold, like maybe you are, that he's going to be coming in at top top level. I still think that they um, they might not position him there. Like He seems to come across to me like he was the... the I know the week before we saw him in the uh, performance centre, like looking over like a coach. Um, you know, sort of, you know, twenty-year veteran of of the business kind of thing, and I've got a feeling they're still going to go that route with him. But um, obviously, really? when it comes to storylines, there's, there's nothing he's involved in just yet. So we've still got to kind of wait. I think that will be the big telling um, answer in that who's going to be the first sort of big name to step up to him and and take him on. But uh, we'll see. We'll see where it goes. Maybe they're just going to kind of do it week to week and and see how that bills it's very difficult obviously they tape a lot of these in in one go and so you can't get that sort of um uh that sort of natural um organic kind of build where you're going to get reactions from people on social media every week they've really just got to go on on their own feel so it's uh it should be interesting to see where what what happens there and of course if you're right then um you know he'll be at the top no doubt regardless of uh, of our perception yeah, I'd love to see Rampage Brown going there with with a with a Saxton Huxley and with a with a big guy. Maybe put him in there with a Joe yeah. Coffee. Uh, you know, a couple of really big bruises to see what Rampage Brown would one, do. One but thing, uh, one, the thing, thing is, sorry, Ramp- I'll, I'll cut on. you up there. One thing I will say is, I noticed that uh, when he came out, the camera work was was looking up. So they obviously really wanted to get over. Uh, presence and size with this guy, a hundred percent. Now Rampage Brown is a big guy, but he, you know, the way they can shoot it, they can make him look even bigger. And I really felt they kind of went that extra bat. That's the only thing I'll say about the entrance that they did change around was the fact that the camera was looking up. Uh, and whenever they do that, it's very Vince McMahon type thing. There, it's uh, it's always to kind of give more presence um, with, with, with a guy. So um, that that's interesting. Yeah. Yeah, but as we've said before, Rampage Brown, he's not going in there as a a newcomer, not really going in there as developmental talent. He's going in there as a Mm 20-year vet. So I think that's that's why he's going to be up in the Mm -hmm. the upper echelons of of the the rankings. We shall see. Time will tell. Um, And I I don't know if it's just my naivety. I'm not not quite sure whether he's a babyface or a Mm -hmm. heel yet. I think that naturally Rampage Brown is better Mm -hmm. as a heel, um, but there's no clear signs of that yet, so we'll have to see. But put him in there, have him a, a good you know five or six minute match with a with a saxton huxley or maybe with a, a dave mastiff that's mm-hmm. what i want to see two big bruises yeah. go at it but we shall see where uh, the future lies for rampage brown but uh, then there was a, a backstage segment john 
Oliver Carter, Ashton Smith poking their nose in, probably not where it's wanted with Pretty Deadly. Wanted to find out what their connection is with Eddie Dennis. We didn't find out any answers um, with regards to Pretty Deadly and their connection with Eddie Dennis. Um, but uh, we, we might be seeing a match between these two teams sooner rather than later. And that could be a pretty good pretty good uh, tag match. And uh, we're pretty high on Pretty Deadly over in uh, NXT UK Weekly with, with myself and John. So, uh, you know, the more we see of Pretty Deadly on our TV screens, the better. But uh, any thoughts on what we saw here between Smith uh, and Carter yeah, it was and good. Pretty Deadly? It wasn't Deadly. one of the, the better backstage scenes we've seen. You know, we have seen a lot of good ones. No. I, I've kind of felt this was like, oh God, they just put that in for the sake of it. And I don't know, after a while, when you look at four guys uh, sort of squabbling over what they're squabbling over, it kind of gets like, are we in, are we in a playground? You know, it's it, it's... Sometimes you just got to be a little bit more creative, and I think they get can get a bit lazy with it sometimes and how we set things up. But nonetheless, like you say, it's potentially the match down the line will be really good. But I just think with guys like Pretty Deadly, um, they're so talented with doing that backstage stuff. I wish they'd give them a little bit more because we only saw little snippets of it in the past couple of weeks uh, where they can make a, such a huge impact doing that kind of stuff. And it, it helps them probably more in that area than it does sometimes in the ring. So, uh, you know, I hope that they, they get a little bit more time and a little bit more freedom to uh, really show their personalities more, you know. Mm, yeah, and I did notice it. Well, you you noticed it straight off the bat last week with Sam Gradwell yep. when he's uh, or a couple of weeks ago with his Mohican haircut and the facials. Uh, Lewis Howley and Sam Stoker were making it Sam yep. Gradwell when it was the same yeah, here. Yeah. They were kind of pulling faces. It was the facials. They've really been working on their character yep. work, and I think that's absolutely fantastic. And that ultimately, on top of the wrestling style, is what's going to get them mm. to the top. But speaking of um, getting getting to the top, uh, we've got uh, Jess with a, a quick reminder of uh, what's to come on Powered Four TV. Jess here from the Powered 4 Media team bringing you next week's lineup of everything that is going on at our streaming service. Of course, we have the best of TNT Volume 1. We have the one PW's event called Twist of the Fate. We have live layers with William Eva and of course celebrating the second year anniversary, dropping a show every single day to celebrate. Of course, that is wrestling with Donna's. Well done, Donna's absolutely smashed it and being one of the best in the game of course we had the nxt weekly show as well with john and Jonas. that guy never stops he never slows down that is why we love him of course and we have some classic matches going there and on there as well we have andre the giant and we also have rollerball rocco x so make sure you check them all out there's a lot going on make sure you have a look and we'll speak to you soon So John, tons going down on uh, Powered 4 TV, the main site and the YouTube channel. Nice of Jess to uh, mention uh, the two-year anniversary of Wrestling with Jonas. We've already dropped uh, quite a few episodes, uh, including uh, our, our best of Jonas interviews, part one and part two. Uh, we dropped our AEW Full Gear review uh, over the weekend. And uh, on Saturday, to cap it all off, the highlight of the week-long uh, celebratory podcast is, is me and you, yep. uh, not on uh, Powered 4, but on Wrestling with Jonas with mad dog Mike Angus talking about the greatest intercontinental champions forward. of all time and trying to a draft together or get together uh, the, the best 10 intercontinental champions of all time so catch that on the Wrestling with John as a podcast uh, um, and uh, there we go I wasn't prepared to put myself over earlier but I am Done now it. John but uh, anything out, anything else there to look forward to that Jess mentioned in yeah, the well, advert uh, obviously she mentions 1PW dropping uh, there's so much 1PW content going on there uh, quite frankly we had two shows last week got a great show this week as well uh, can't yeah. say enough good things about 1PW if you haven't if you're not familiar with it uh, it was sank around uh, in between the years of sort of 2005 to sort of 2009 and uh, some of the talent they had from all different kinds of uh, promotions including Ring of Honor TNA uh, NOAA uh, and, and even other places beyond that as far as I, I'm aware like in, in Europe and yeah you've got guys like AJ Styles you've got a very young pack uh, you've got Christopher Daniels, um, you've got Samoa Joe, and you know a lot of those WWE guys got AEW guys on there as well, and of course TNA guys. So it's it's a real mix. I'm I'm not sure you'll ever see quite as many uh, much as a mix uh, as that again, quite frankly, especially on this uh, UK soil. But yeah, go and check that out. And also 
uh, want to give uh, a lot of uh, praise over to Chicago Land Wrestling uh, doing their series on YouTube. Uh, big news coming next week about their first event that will be dropping on Powered 4. So really looking forward to getting stuck into that. Go and check it out, powered4.tv. Uh, and if you go over there and use our promo code POWERED, you will get 50% off of your first month. Don't miss out on that, quite frankly. Get over there, have a look. Uh, you can see everything that's available. Go check it out now, powered4.tv. Use the promotional code POWERED. And, of course, this week, you're going to see Jonas right at the top. He's headlining like a main event. So there you go. He's <laughs> Love headlining it. like Love main event. For the first time in my life. <laughs> uh, but uh, uh, going back to the yep. show, John, uh, th- then we get a recap of the long-term feud between Kaylee Ray and Piper Niven. And uh, last week, we thought Ginny had done enough to possibly earn herself a number one contendership uh, to Kaylee Ray's championship. But it looks like they're, they're pressing ahead with the mm-hmm. Kaylee Ray and Piper Niven feud. And I'm not sure if they mentioned when. It could well be as soon as next week. But we are going to be getting that, that potentially final or blow-off championship match between Kaylee Ray and Piper and Niven. Um, so uh, any thoughts on what went down here? Like I say, we're not getting Ginny into the frame, but we are going to be getting an epic championship match between KLR and Piper and Niven. Um, I think possibly next yeah, week. Yeah, I hope so that it is next week. So I do think they kind of need to move on to the next part. I mean, there's so many female talents there. Um, we're going to talk about obviously in, in a short time, but like, there's so much, so much talent there that I kind of feel like they've, for some reason, they've really keep going back to this, like a, a comfort thing you know like a a comfy pair of uh old socks or something you know what i mean like i don't know why they've uh keep reverting backwards rather than trying to you know get more of the female talent up obviously a couple of weeks ago i i kind of had my me head in me uh in me in me hands when i saw that bloody the the whole kerfuffle at the end of one of the shows i know <laughs> what the bloody hell was going on but yeah but, um yeah i i i'm i'm kind of looking forward to it but equally i'm 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 just as excited to sort of move on from that and see some new developing storylines for for a lot of the other females. Yeah, and for anybody that's ever heard me uh, wax lyrical about Piper Niven um, or Viper, as she was called on the indies, absolutely huge fan. I really, really enjoy watching Kaylee Ray as well. Huge fan of hers, but I've got a sneaking suspicion they keep going back to this match because eventually I think that Piper Niven yeah. could get could get the win. Yeah, so uh, as a huge fan yeah. of Piper Niven, I'm going to go out on a limb and I'm going to say uh, when they do fight, and I think it is next week, I think that Piper Niven could come out on top. Well, certainly I'll be rooting for her and hoping that she does. But uh, let's talk about the next match. And you alluded to it a moment ago. Um, another women's match. Two very, very strong uh, competitors in the NXT UK women's division. Zia Brookside versus Nina Samuels. And for what it was, this was a fine match between these two. Uh, you know, we saw an Indian deathlock from Zia Brookside early on, a backbreaker and some really, you know, vicious uh, offense, some big boots uh, in there from Nita Samuels, really laying the boot in. Uh, there was a, a nice comeback from Brookside, uh, but then we saw a, a, a tumble from the top turbuckle by Nina Samuels. And she, she did look like she uh, genuinely landed uh, quite awkwardly um, on uh, on her uh, right ankle. She seemed to be struggling. The referee went over to her, um, but uh, the, the referee didn't wave the match off. And uh, I think Samuel said that she was okay to continue. Zia Brookside was in there, took full advantage of the situation, rolled her up and got a surprise pinfall. Normally when it's kind of like a roll up or a schoolboy, you kind of think that uh, it's going to get reversed or kicked out. I also thought that Nina Samuels was playing possum to a certain degree and that she was going to uh, possibly lay in a kick before uh, Brookside could lay in any offence but that didn't happen we got the pinfall for Zy Brookside as they're walking back up the ramp towards the curtain towards the locker room Nina Samuels turned towards Zy Brookside hit her with another huge boot um, and then uh, yeah but hit a, a, a Nina Garoche down by ringside uh, to lay Zy Brookside out so it looks like we've got a, a bit of a storyline, a bit of a feud, a, a long-term feud building between these two. I can see them going back mm-hmm. to this uh, for Zaya to kind of get some sort of comeuppance, although she did get the win here. Uh, what were your thoughts on what went down here? Because it's quite a, a unique end to the match, yeah, I was John. trying to think logically what the hell just happened. Like, who could come out the better of this? Like, Nina, obviously, for a bit, we think she's injured. I'm assuming, you know, that's what she was doing. She was playing possum, and it kind of backfired badly. <laughs> 
<laughs> because she mm. can't roll up because then you know uh, a minute later she's you know beating the heck out of Zaya. Uh, I'm, I'm guessing that's what happened. Is that what you saw? I, I don't know if I've just read that wrong. But she acted like that was not an injury, so I'm assuming that's a very heelish kind of thing. However, it, she made a quick recovery yeah. whether she Either was injured or, or not. But in, the, in the ring, it looked genuine. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so um, interesting development. So uh, carry no, on no, if you uh, have more to so, say about yeah, this. So the logic of it was a bit odd. Um, but you know, and it, it was strange that Zaya still got still picked up the win. But um, there you go. I think. Um, I mean, if this is one of the the feuds and a program they're going to go into, hopefully that does give another layer to the uh, female side of things, which would be pretty decent. Obviously, they do look like um, you know, bar Ginny, that Zaya would be the next one as well going up. So I'm I'm pretty certain of that. So this is good because again, I always harp on about this. You always have to have a decent tier system system um and 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 know who really is at the top and who's kind of working their way up and you know you don't want to just see someone thrown in there getting a title shot uh like we see so often with everything else it's nice when you actually see people progressing so this might be uh you know a little road for zaya here to uh to get on and um you know she might it might be one of those ones where she just always keeps picking up the win regardless of the hill it's just odd because normally it's the other way around but this is uh, at least it's different and uh and, and uh, a little bit unique i suppose Indeed, indeed. And we've said before, time and time again, that the NXT UK women's division um, is, is a stacked roster. Lots and lots of talent there and lots of names kind of coming onto the scene almost on a mm -hmm. weekly basis, to be honest with you, when yeah. you think of the, the Danny Lunas and the Valkyries and so many more. Um, but uh, let's talk about the main event then. Um, and it was the second semi final in the Heritage Cup. Last week, we saw A Kid go over Noam Dar to progress to the final. This week, you've got Trent Seven versus the Bomber Dave. Mastiff in the second semi-final to see who will face a kid. Uh, I'm not sure when the final is taking place. Next week, maybe the week after. They might give it a week's build before we get that uh, big final showdown. Now, in commentary, John, they were billing this as the teacher versus a student. However, uh, both of these two men, I think it's fair to say, are kind of stalwarts, kind of veterans of the UK scene. Uh, but both men are looking for singles silverware uh, in the shape of the Heritage Cup on NXT UK. Um, and these men, uh, like I say, are two big kind of giants of the UK scene. The first fall in this match, however, John, went to Trent Seven almost out of nowhere, John, uh, with a crucifix pin, uh, despite suffering from a, a bad wheel uh, of, the, of the hands of Dave Mastiff. Uh, these two men were beating the living hell out of each other, and uh, by the end of the third round, they were breathing very, very hard. They were obviously uh, struggling with the round system as the match was progressing, um, e even after a gigantic superplex from the top turnbuckle by Dave Mastiff on, uh, on, on Trent Seven. There was a worrying and slightly controversial scene at the end of round four. I don't know if you noticed this after Mastiff leveled seven with uh, the same uh, running forearm that uh, knocked out Joseph Connors. Now, there were still seconds on the clock. The referee was checking on Trent Seven, um, but uh, Mastiff wanted to go in for the cover. The referee stopped him. Trent Seven said I'm fine to continue and then the bell rang so a missed opportunity there possibly at the hands of the referee to prevent Dave Mastiff from getting that winning pinfall or to, to level things up I should say uh, but uh as the bell rang for the next round, Bastiff didn't wait too long to even things up with a, a Vader bomb and then a running cannibal into the corner but somehow Trent Seven continued to fight back and into the sixth round and somehow managed to hit the uh, uh, hit Mastiff with a burning hammer um, for the incredible pinfall to advance to the final. So another pinfall for Seven out of nowhere, you could say, to go two falls to one up. And in the sixth round, Trent Seven pulled out a bit of a shocker, to be honest with you. And I bet Dave Mastiff was thinking if only I had a chance to, to cover Trent Seven um, a couple of rounds earlier when I had the opportunity. Um, both guys were beat up by the end of this after the match you had Trent Seven kind of talking to the trophy saying that my name's going to be on there a kid turned up there was a little bit of a stare down that sets up the final perfectly we know who the two competitors are going to be now Trent Seven versus a kid in the final of the Heritage Cup I've got to be honest with you I really enjoyed this match I, I thought that um, it was it was hard hitting uh, tough on both competitors some big moves some surprise pinfalls kind of what you want in this sort of competition John but uh, what did you think I um I think this is probably the best, most most realistic 
match we've had. Like I, I think if there's one thing I'm surprised about with this Heritage Cup that they've kept consistent with, which I am shocked about because it's a WWE thing. And I'm I'm pretty sure if we'd have seen this on, on stateside, you know, across the pond, this would have been like eight nine or something or some ridiculous score lines and we would have seen a lot of pinfalls, a lot of kind of crazy excitements like five fours and all the rest of it. But none of this tournament has really been like that. It's been quite sort of held back. Uh, which I have appreciated because I there's nothing worse than you're thinking how come they don't pin like this normally uh, that quick you know it just drives you mad so they've kept consistently uh, that way and, and actually you know the scoreline reflected that the way they they told the story um, you know they they didn't kind of like make it that closeness in the score and even though there were times where Mastiff could have easily you know leveled it up I think it was I think it was perfectly done it was a nice balance between drama and realism in this one it was mm. a nice mix um and yeah I, I didn't i didn't mind it i don't think it was the best match we've seen um and you know i think ultimately i think last week we kind of we both were probably on the the side of mastiff i think we both kind of was thinking you know he's our guy we'd like to see him get there because of our, our connections or whatnot but you know trent's there um the one thing that really hit home to me, though, John, was when he got outside, and as you you said, um, when he you know he went up to this cup and looked at it and said, "My name's going to be," on. I thought, "Hang on a minute, I've got to be honest. What is this cup even about? Um, what it, what are they actually fighting for here? And is it you know it just sort of dawned on me." Is it one of those things, John, where this is just a typical prop, like an Andre the Giant memorial trophy that gets broken up a week later and all the rest of it? Um, it doesn't. I don't think they've said anything about, you know, you get a title shot or you get this at the end of it, have they? I don't think there's anything like that that's come out. So I'm assuming this is for just uh, a, a cup that's kind of been made up to kind of, you know, showcase a little bit of the old school, but there's, there's nothing more than that. And that, that's probably a little bit of a, a, a problem in a lot of ways, because you want something a bit more on the line. And, uh, I would hate for it to just be, okay, he, whoever wins, you know, the finals is just, he's the first heritage cup winner, but you know, it's got to be more to it than that. Quite frankly. Uh, what about you? I, mean, I don't know yeah. where you sit with that, but well, honestly, uh, I don't know why I haven't mentioned this before, but it just really dawned on me when he was standing next to it. And I thought, Oh no. <laughs> Yeah, I, I think you you got a you know I I'm of the same thinking you know where does it lead the winner do they get a, a championship shot um, or is it just kind of forgotten and and the the cups put in a cupboard until they they brush it off twelve months down the line for Heritage Cup Part Two the Revenge um, but uh, but I don't know I put it this way if if a kid wins. I would love to see him have a, a championship opportunity against mm -hmm. Walter. Can you imagine how good that match yeah. is going to be? Walter, we've said time and time again, he's great in that big man, little man dynamic. We've not seen an A-Kid Walter match, certainly not in NXT UK. And I don't think they've been in the ring together. If they have, it's been in some obscure um, indie mm -hmm. promotion. But, but that could be a match that could really get people tuning yeah. in and seeing potentially the future of NXT UK A-Kid against, you know, uh, the, the ring general, the, the, the champion of the division, Walter. Uh, that would be a real, you know, a, a channel changer as far as I'm concerned. I'd really want to kind of switch on and watch that match. So th that could be something... I wouldn't be so excited if Trent Seven won it, to be honest with you. We know about Trent Seven. I thought he was excellent in this match. His selling um, was was off the charts with that uh, bad knee and how he was going through the punishment from Dave Mastiff. Um, still gutted that Mastiff didn't win it, but never mind. So... Yeah, I mean, if there are rewards at the end of it, then I'm all for it. If it's just to be put in a cupboard for another 12, 12 months and uh, not mentioned again, then really they probably, you know, should have thought twice about actually doing the tournament and maybe thinking about something different altogether. Um, but uh, as for the final, um, I know you're pretty keen on A-Kid. Are you still going for A-Kid as your, your, uh, your Heritage Cup yeah, winner, Yeah, I don't see it any other way, quite frankly. he's uh, He has to be the winner. And I, you know, I know I said, last week what i envisioned happening i'm 
pretty certain that that could still be the case where we see two baby faces in the finals and it's, you know, uh, the handshake at the end. The only thing that will save it for me for a Trent win is if Trent, you know, really turns at the end of it, you know, and uh, pulls that saint quite nasty and vicious to uh, make sure he wins this and keeps himself current. Now, that I would probably enjoy because it gives him something fresh to do. But um, I, I think other than that, it's it's a kid all the way for me uh, winning this one. But like mm. you said, I'd like to see it where he's elevated to something. It doesn't have to be straight away, but like a match down the way, uh, you know, of his choosing down down the road, you know, against the, uh, the the current champion, and that would be pretty decent because then it does it, it kind of gives you the reason to have it every year. But I think if it's if it's there for every year just for the sake of this cup. Um, you know, quite frankly, there's nothing about it. It's not never been around before. So I'm, I kind of feel like they will get a little bit lost um, and more of a, a prop. Unless you're a, like uh, the famous and of course the, the legendary Owen Hart of his slammies. Um, <laughs> I was just thinking the same. Don't bother with it. You know what I mean? So uh, yeah, it's great for a heel to win because you can you can fl- you can have it coming out of you every time. But if you're a baby face, yeah. you're not going to do that. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, a lost opportunity there for not putting Noam, Noam Dar through to the final because I think he would have been the, the perfect heel yeah. to kind of really shove that in our faces. But uh, I'm actually looking forward to the final. The more we talk about it, especially after this second semi final and having seen A Kid progress last week, I'm looking forward to the final. Looking forward to seeing what they do with it. Looking forward to seeing, you know, who they decide to put the trophy on and uh, what they decide to do with the, with the winner down the line. Uh, but uh, yes, exciting times. We've got that, and we've got the the NXT Women's NXT UK Women's uh, Championship match to look forward to as well. So a few things to look forward to uh, next week or over the next couple of weeks, John. But uh, yeah, I mean, any any closing thoughts on on this week's show? And I've got to ask you, like we do every single week, where's your mm. thumb? Uh, was it a thumbs up or a thumbs down show, or maybe thumbs in the middle if you're undecided? Um, you know, before we we got talking through this, I was really a little bit downbeat about the show, but after sort of reviewing it and you know i guess going through it bit by bit again you know it's kind of changed one it was looking like this it was going to be the first was it really one, but i'm now in the middle I, through the discussions through, through reviewing it a little bit more i've kind of felt a little bit differently about it but i i think you know listen we come off of uh, something you know last week where it felt a little bit flat from the, from the course of the great main event that we had we knew it was probably yeah. going to be like that uh, and I think I just needed something to pick up. Now, one thing I'll say just before you get to your thumbs up or uh, whatnot, mm. one thing I will add about potentially a problem for NXT UK, as much as we've said this is fantastic because there is only an hour uh, and you know, it's very digestible, etc., etc., and there are no big takeovers coming, so we get you know all great matches all, all the way down the line. The only issue for me, uh, I think, if I was a casual fan, and once I've seen Walter and Dragunov, I kind of want a follow-up um, soon after. And I don't think they've done that. Uh, I think they probably should have done it on this show. Um, even if it's just like an interview uh, where they're, I don't know, in their, in their house or whatever. Yeah. Like they're talking about what's happened, the aftermath a little bit. Uh, and I do think like they've, they've kind of left it. Like it got all these grave reviews from outside in the industry. And I wonder really, John, if that's a... If that's sort of their own downfall by doing all these tapings in advance, not knowing what the reaction would be around the world. I know that the commentating is done on a much more current basis because you hear them talking about the social medias and, you know, what what the, the reaction was. But for the most part, this stuff has all been canned and it's going out bit by bit. But I... I kind of feel like they miss out a little trick there about having that momentum just pretty much dip where I think it could have been quite a higher level if we'd have just maybe heard something from Eagle Eye or, you know, Dragunov or, you know, Walter himself about his defence. Yeah, it's interesting. I hadn't thought about it until you just brought it up there, but we we haven't really had any kind of uh, follow-up backstage interview or much uh, follow-up backstage mm-hmm. footage immediately yeah. following that match since the match and it's been what uh, two weeks now since yeah, that main event yeah. um, but um, they, they need to follow it up mm-hmm. soon otherwise people are going to kind of forget about Ilya Dragunov all over yeah. again um, you know despite um, how much momentum he had off the back of that match you leave it too long and people he's going to be starting from yeah. zero again but I certainly hope that doesn't happen but for me 
Um, I really want to give this this show a thumbs up. I really do, but I just it wasn't quite there for me. So I'm going to give it a thumbs in the middle. I'm going to go with yourself. Like I say, thumbs. I really enjoyed that main event. I thought I, I loved that stiff uh, kind of hard hitting match between Mastiff and Seven. I even enjoyed the opening tag match mainly for the kind of the new dynamic that we've got with uh, the Hunts, uh, Wild Boar and Primate, and Eddie Dennis. I'm kind of enjoying that, and I'm, I'm enjoying the journey and the development there. I really am. Um, but uh, yeah, not much else. Kind of really kind of ticked the boxes for me this week if I'm honest I uh, thought some of the backstage stuff was fairly weak just like you said um, but um, it, we are get, we are looking forward to it we are getting excited for the final of the, of the Heritage Cup and the, the women's championship match which are to come so those will be hopefully definitely thumbs up uh, shows for sure but I'm thumbs in the middle I really wanted to give it a thumbs up uh, but I just couldn't quite this week uh, but uh, John that, that brings us to an yes, end of yes. another episode of NXT UK Weekly um, so uh, hopefully the next seven days will fly I'm sure they will can't wait to do this all over again with you my, my, my friend but uh, uh, there we go we will catch up with you again in seven days no time worries. john yeah, we'll do uh should be uh, a lot of uh, ins and outs before that obviously got my list for the intercontinental uh, over at wrestling with Jonas. go and check that out uh both on youtube and uh, that'll be dropping on saturday there go so uh, i've got my list involved looking forward to getting on there with uh, mad dog uh, mike angus as well so I'll uh, I'll be certainly ready. ready that was for a this. really yeah, fun yeah, show. I'll be ready for that. A and, really fun uh, show. Yeah, check out Powered Four. We're going to have a, a couple of new promotions joining. We got one from Belgium coming. Uh, little heads up there, Pro Wrestling All Stars, and uh, they done very well on our uh, our older version of the platform Turnbuckle TV. They had a trial on it. It was the most watched show uh, ever on the entire platform. So we're really excited to have them back on with us now at powered four and they've got a lot more uh brand new content coming as well as well as some archive stuff awesome. so uh very much looking forward to that there we go well from myself and from john scott we'll catch up with you all again soon mm-hmm.